going to begin. Hello and welcome to the panel on legal risks relating to investments in Central Eastern Europe and Russia. Uh, my name is Chris Rose. I'm at Squire Sanders. We're a global law firm. Uh, I oversee our firm's private equity practice in Central Eastern Europe and Russia. Um, this panel will stay along the theme that we've seen today about investment in Central Eastern Europe and CIS, um, covering uh, protections for minority investors, uh, enforcement of arbitral clauses, and then specifically look at uh, the legal frameworks of uh, certain CE countries. I'm going to let each of the panelists introduce themselves, uh, starting with Rome at the end. Just say a couple words about yourself and your firm, and then we're going to turn over to the presentations, and after which, at the very end, we're going to have a question and answer session and an open dialogue. So let me start with the panel, panelists introducing themselves, please. Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Roman Stepnenko. I'm um, a counsel and co-head of Capital Markets Banking and Finance practice of uh, Yegorov, Buginsky, Afanasyev and Partners in Kiev, Ukraine. Um, and um, the practice is uh, around 15 years in the markets, and uh, I'm, I've been with them for, for like ten last 10 years. I'll, I'll give you some more details if you need after, but just not to waste everyone's time. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Good, good afternoon. My name is Yulia Pitehova, and I am partner in consulting company Al House Consulting. And today I'm going to tell some issues about deal structure and about <laughs> transaction support. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brian Slamaric, and um, I'm a partner with the Belgrade office of Kinsteller. Kinsteller is a regional law firm with uh, offices in Prague, Budapest, Bucharest, um, uh, Bratislava, Istanbul, and Belgrade. Um, I am primarily M&A and uh, corporate lawyer. I, in addition to Serbia, I've been working in most of the jurisdictions of the former Yugoslavia. And my today's presentation will be focusing on, on the Serbian legal framework in general. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Jan Kohout. I'm partner of PRK Partners, a uh, law firm based in Prague, Czech Republic, <coughs> Bratislava, Slovakia, and Budapest, Hungary. Uh, my today's presentation will give you some uh, uh, introductive information on uh, changes in uh, Czech civil law system, which will be implemented from the beginning of next year. Thank you. Afternoon. I'm Yuri Varobyev from PPLF Group. I'm uh, the head of uh, dispute resolution practice group, and I'm focused on all sorts of dispute, disputes uh, we have here in Russia, uh, in, uh, including those involving foreign, foreign investors. And I'll try to uh, <clears throat> describe all those problems we face together with our clients in connection with the invest investments in Russia. Good afternoon. I'm Natalia Drebizgina, a partner with the Moscow office of Debbie Voice in Primton, dealing primarily with M&A, general corporate ma markets and securities. And uh, my presentation today would deal primarily with minority shareholder protections and rights in Russia. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Andrei Pichov. I'm a senior associate with uh, O2 Consulting, a Moscow-based boutique law firm uh, with offices in Moscow and Zurich. And uh, today well, I will talk about the essentials of uh, the new, newly uh, to be introduced amendments in the Russian Civil Code uh, and pertaining to reps and warranties and how they will work. Thank you. Thank you all. Can I ask the first presentation to be loaded up? Doesn't matter which one. It's whoever's lucky gets to go first. And and the winner is. That's me. Oh, okay. Uh, shall I be doing the presentation in Russian or English? Whatever you whatever you feel more comfortable with. Whatever you want. Uh, well, it's. It's been prepared in Russian, so if you are not against that completely, I will do it in Russian and just will be able to answer your questions in whichever language of two um, you wish. Okay, go Russian. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Roman Stepanenko. Uh,
today, I'd like to dwell on some uh, legal aspects uh, of investments in Ukraine. When I browsed uh, uh, through the program of the conference, uh, I noticed uh, that uh, not so high focus uh, apart uh, well well uh, apart from some speakers uh, not that much uh, focus uh, has been given to ukraine at this conference uh, therefore i think it would be helpful uh, to first uh, to first uh, uh, repose on uh, some general things uh, uh, relating to the environment uh, uh, where marketplace uh, uh, have to live in Ukraine, and also uh, the key points uh, and uh, drivers uh, which, uh, in effect, uh, 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 make this environment. Uh, Ukraine, uh, similar to many other countries uh, of the region, uh, CEE region, unfortunately, uh, is still in a post-crisis uh, reality. What we witness uh, is uh, uh, the great willingness uh, by Ukrainian uh, marketplace uh, to go uh, uh, to uh, debt financing capital. Uh, the dissatisfaction, uh, which uh, has become chronic in that sense uh, uh, since uh, 2009, uh, it does not uh, relate to uh, sovereign and quasi-sovereign uh, players. Uh, I will uh, uh, dwell on those individually later. And the second aspect uh, of uh, today's Ukraine is unfortunately the ongoing uh, notional uh, protection of a foreign investor uh, in the country as a whole. And uh, all the country-related risks uh, are rooted in there, which unfortunately in some aspects uh, uh, we as observers uh, have been uh, uh, witnessing for a fairly long time. An important aspect of regulation uh, is still uh, it's a, a stiffness in many areas, uh, including uh, currency control, taxation, uh, regulators uh, response uh, uh, to our uh, legislation instability and this uh, response uh, is manifest in uh, in many cases where uh, uh, novelties uh, are applied not as uh, conceived uh, by the lawmaker but uh, as a uh, 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 an ad hoc basis uh, where it's uh, relevant uh, for a specific regulator. Uh, this uh, practice uh, is not uh, stable and there is volatility and uh, has no impact uh, at all whatsoever uh, or does not help uh, whatsoever. Uh, the investor uh, understand better what uh, is in store for him in the market when certain uh, rules and practices uh, are applied. Uh, it uh, concerns primarily uh, novelties, uh, but uh, is not uh, limited to those. Uh, apart from the stiffness in regulation, uh, in a paradox, uh, we uh, give focus presently to uh, 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 the uh, wishy-washy steps by Ukrainian uh, regulators uh, toward uh, liberalization of the regulatory framework uh, in investment. Uh, It is sort of a response uh, to uh, to the challenges uh, coming from the West. No doubt, uh, uh, in relation to Ukraine and uh, its government, uh, fairly uh, fairly uh, uh, simple requirements have been defined uh, by the European uh, com uh, Union. Uh, with its expectations. Uh, these expectations are in the area of uh, legal framework liberalization. Uh, Ukraine is trying to follow this road, uh, but unfortunately, or and rather always, uh, it does not come out. Uh, yet, uh, uh, we are probably at the very beginning of the road, uh, and it's, uh, it justifies our errors. Uh, 
the latest trend uh, in the context of investment uh, in uh, 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 equity capital, what we have seen over the last two years, uh, there is a trend uh, to to uh, uh, to uh, Ukrainian majors uh, uh, going uh, from the Ukrainian market. Uh, the latest example is the Svetbank and Sevbank, which uh, have uh, successfully sold out uh, their subsidiaries in Ukraine. And they have uh, exited from the market, if not 100%, but in effect, uh, well, well, uh, they are uh, wrapping up. Now I'd like to structure my presentation, emphasizing uh, the debt and the shareholder capital. Let's discuss primarily the debt capital. Uh, at the angle of regulation, where Ukraine is uh, with its debt capital. As I mentioned, there is a, a financial deficit in uh, Ukrainian business and uh, retained appetite from uh, foreign investors. Uh, and uh, definitely this is <clears throat> the reason, one of the reasons that in Ukraine are still inefficient uh, legal framework that does not allow investors to receive this comfort that they would have expected in the context of their investment protection. So, as I mentioned, the currency control uh, and main regulator in this area is National Bank of Ukraine, uh, still following conservative position, having regulated almost all aspects of funds from Ukraine and to Ukraine, and uh, a lot of stumbling blocks in terms of uh, uh, exit of currency, foreign exchange, uh, opening accounts, and uh, opening foreign accounts both overseas and uh, sending money there. So this regulation has the result that uh, many transactions that the market in principle is morally prepared to cannot be implemented because these stumble blocks and uh, uh, jeopardizing the standard structures. In this context, I need to mention that in the Ukraine, unfortunately, is not possible uh, structures like project financing. Unfortunately, uh, a number of issues with uh, uh, secured financing in general, some aspects like, I mean, some important uh, security instruments as uh, um, warrants and what is called in the Western European corporate guarantees. In the Ukrainian you, realities are not implemented um, in the Ukraine because the, the sponsor and guarantor uh, providing comfort from the Ukraine to beneficiaries, uh, investors in terms of uh, securing and uh, ensuring payment obligations. The obstacle is to to move the currency out of, of the Ukraine. Uh, the most sad thing in this that the trend to liberalize in this area are not expected still. Uh, a national bank is not making uh, any, any declarations uh, on this topic. In the context a couple of words for debt capital that I wanted to say. Unfortunately, uh, investor protection uh, in courts uh, is also uh, not good. Um, practice is not uh, constant. Some same situations are adjudicated in different ways, and same norms are interpreted um, by the principle ad hoc principle, unfortunately. So again, 
uh, it's all about investor confidence in uh, Ukrainian. In terms of private equity and, and uh, the boom that was seen before 2009 on IPOs of Ukrainian companies in foreign exchanges has been uh, declined and, and 2011 didn't have any deals. In 2013, those companies who had done work to uh, enter the market will reinstate their efforts. Again, here there is a, a number of issues uh, related to legal framework and uh, regulation. Again, it's about foreign currency control and the state sector that is also wanted to use uh, not borrowed but, but private equity um, from foreign countries uh, still uh, fully limited uh, in this uh, opportunity and, and the biggest uh, Ukrainian state companies like Anatnaftigas of Ukraine and uh, or railroads um, um, their uh, reforms are in under full state control. So in terms of expectations, unfortunately, we don't expect a um, boom of activities from, from regulators in terms of market re liberalization. In the short term, we expect uh, uh, sovereign entering the market and borrowings, uh, but the appetite of investors to corporate debt uh, will still be at low level as it is now. Thank you for your attention. If any questions, uh, please. Unfortunately, we don't have much time budgeted for each speaker because of the number of speakers, because I knew you had a lot of more interesting things to say as well. So we I'm, can I'm hit sorry, those sorry afterwards. You for taking it longer than, yeah. All good stuff. <laughs> um, which presentation uh, can we bring up next, please? Stay tuned. Okay. Congratulations. Can we have the um, can we have the remote control? Thank you. Pass that down. <coughs> Thanks, Natalia. From the issues of Ukrainian investment, we come to protection of minority shareholders in Russia uh, for investors. This presentation is is. In English, but as far as I understand, I'm more, we have more Russian speaking. Uh, so I suggest we move forward in Russian, but the slides will be in English. So if needed, we can agree with organizers if necessary uh, to uh, translate, but we were asked to use English as a working language. So uh, the presentation will be mostly interesting, uh, not so much to Russian investors than rather to foreign investors who are interested in investment in Russia. So when investing, the first question of investment in, in Russia related whether to invest directly to Russian companies or via offshore structures like SPVs or uh, companies created outside of Russia. And uh, offshore structure <coughs> and allows and is more preferable to investors in terms of corporate governance and uh, favorite jurisdictions are uh, Holland, BVI, and until recently Cyprus, and possibly in the future Cyprus, although we all know that with this ju jurisdiction, which was very suitable to investment into Russia in terms of taxation and, and legislation that's allowed to implement the necessary level of protection of investors. Uh, now there are some issues with that. And uh, and all consider alternative options, um, decide whether to stay in Cyprus or think about other jurisdictions. Uh, tax planning 
also is important when choosing jurisdiction and BVI here as a holding parent company is undoubtedly in terms of possibilities to implement the provisions and apply in, uh, English law is preferable, but in terms of tax planning, it requires in, including other companies in the group that allows to, to use this double taxation avoidance uh, agreement with Russian Federation and cases of using of non-Russian company as a company through which investment is, is performed, we need to think about ways of securing and uh, shareholder rights along all the chain of ownership, including subsidiaries. In case of planning investment directly into Russian company, this is the case when protection of minority shareholders is especially important for investors. We need to understand which level of uh, protection Russian legislation can offer. In Russia, it's uh, clear for all present in, in, in this panel and, and Russian lawyers, uh, main companies through which investment is uh, limited liability companies and, and joint venture and, and I mean uh, open joint stock company and close. If there are changes in civil law, all companies will be split to public. Uh, uh, joint stock companies uh, which shares uh, or converted into uh, went through a leasing procedure and, and publicly traded on the stock exchange and non-public companies that would be uh, limited liability companies and joint stock companies that will continue to work but will not be uh, uh, public. So most important since LLC structures are more dynamic that allows to resolve most issues in the charter and uh, including uh, excluding the right to, to sell the share and, and submit it to the general shareholders meetings the issues that are not uh, included directly in the law is more interesting in terms of minority rights and and, and provides protection of minority rights and just a companies that has some some right to get information from the company and a number of rights depend on, on the percentage of ownership of shares in a company, including the right to uh, claim and issue claim to a shareholder with a requirement to director to compensate losses and damages, um, uh, uh, the right to uh, submit to agenda and, and, and convene the general shareholders meetings uh, with owning a certain package of shares that needs to be taken into account uh, when you buy some uh, shareholding. There are other ways of protection of uh, separate requirements to transaction approvals uh, with uh, interest, uh, buy out shares in some cases, and, and preferable uh, buying shares from 2008 and 9. The Russian law has um, the shareholder agreements, shareholder and about uh, rights. But unfortunately, the courts uh, still looking at them too conservatively. And uh, agreements uh, by Russian law uh, provide investors less protection of rights rather than uh, shareholders' agreements under foreign legislation and one of the ways to protect investor rights are international agreements and including uh, first of all about mutual protection of investments that also has some issues in practice but that's one of the issues that needs to be taken into account when structuring investments Next slide is about uh, information rights. These are information as the right to request shareholders, and the list is uh, quite large, but we need to take into account that the right to get information and access to documents of um, accounting and financials and, and, and protocols of uh, collegiate executive board is only with the uh, shareholders with 25 and more shareholding. Next slide summarize uh, the rights to shareholders regarding of percentage of owning 
ownership of shares. I would suggest, since we have a limited time, not to dwell on each of them, but mention that 1%, that's the right to have like so-called derivative claims and require compensation of damages uh, by action of directors and, and the right to uh, access register. That's only 1%. 2% is the right to, to bring issues to the agenda of uh, annual meeting, 10% the right to convene extraordinary uh, general meeting, and 25 plus 1 share. That's the percentage of that makes sense to purchase by in a minority packet because it's a blocking uh, package. And, uh, um, 30, 50 is uh, less related to minority shareholdings. So moving towards the next slide, as I said, 1% of shares allows shareholders to re uh, re require compensation of damages and by actions of directors. Next slide. Uh, tells what was summarized in a separate table. In addition to what I said earlier, 10% uh, ownership of shares provides shareholder the right to, to re require uh, audits uh, uh, or revision of, of a review of uh, company, 25% blocking share, and a separate way of Investor protection is uh, approval of non-interested shareholders, in, and these deals go to a general meeting if the value of property subject is two or more uh, percent of balance sheet value of company, and if the deal, by the reason of uh, uninterested independent directors, is not enough to approve the deal. Usually, interested shareholder would be those who have 25 and more percent in the company if it or affiliated are party or of the deal or own more than 25 percent in transactions. So, minority shareholders, uh, in some cases by you know, Russian law, have the right to buy out uh, shares in case of approval major transactions and. Restructuring of the company, and, and if shareholders voted against or didn't participate in voting on transaction, and from January of this year, this right is also with shareholders in case of approval by general uh, meeting about decision about shares delisting maximum amount of funds that can be spent by the company to buy out shares at ten percent of net asset value of of company if more is for buyout in this in pro rata of two requirements made them that the decision about delisting uh, will not be valid if shareholders were <coughs> given more shares for buyout and they would be uh, circulated in the exchange. Also, the law has uh, the way to protect minority a uh, preferable right to, to purchase shares in case of open subscription when this right is provided to all shareholders pro rata to their shares on, and in case of issuing shares by closed subscription, so to a certain uh, number of, but this right only with shareholders who were voting uh, against or didn't take part in voting. And in closed trades of companies, also there is a right of, of preferable uh, buying of newly issued shares and when selling by shareholders to third parties. So, as I said, uh, a recent innovation of, of Russian legislation is uh, direct uh, possibility of, of signing shareholder agreements and about participant rights. Unfortunately, courts are still conservative about that, so everything which is not uh, provided in the law is, this issue is still 
whether the shareholder agreements can be subject to any law other than Ru Russian, this issue may be resolved in in case of amending civil uh, codes and when presumption could be overall to shareholders agreement or corporate agreement to foreign uh, legislation in case of this uh, will not violate imperative norms of Russian legislation. How it will be interpreted, it's an open, maybe it will bring a similar interpretation that we have now. So in the current uh, wording, um, based on uh, conservative and interpretation of, of legislation, shareholders agreement can be concluded only between shareholders, so it's not possible to make a party of agreement, third party, like future shareholder, so that to, to regulate their rights uh, before purchasing shares. So That's why, as a rule, uh, recommendations, uh, when an uh, acquisition is being planned uh, and privatization, uh, some uh, comfort uh, should be given before uh, the shareholder is informed. Uh, at least uh, one single share to sell. You know, it, it would allow to sign an agreement with the ongoing, uh, with the current shareholders. Uh, and this issue also changes in the civil code uh, in part uh, will be settled, uh, uh, and the, the, the parties to the agreement uh, could be then uh, uh, creditors of the society or some third parties uh, in order uh, to uh, protect uh, the, uh, law, uh, the, the third parties' uh, rights. Uh, uh, but how they will be uh, uh, interpreted, uh, these rights and rules, uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how the civil code will be changed in accordance uh, with the uh, existing and the uh, 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 planned uh, changes. Uh, so we are nearing some end. Uh, uh, so now a couple of words uh, about the uh, 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 mutual uh, investment protection law. The Russian Federation has signed more than 40 such agreements, probably 44, uh, with uh, some uh, UN members. Uh, uh, the uh, mutual uh, protection of the capital, including uh, the uh, listed country, above listed countries like Austria, Luxembourg, Bulgaria, Canada, the UK. Uh, some agreements have not been ratified, uh, uh, like with Croatia. And so it evokes questions uh, whether uh, ratifying these agreements could uh, impact uh, on uh, Russian uh, depositors' uh, uh, rights uh, on Cyprus. Uh, overall, these agreements allow the investor uh, to have an opportunity in some cases to uh, to uh, 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 to, to uh, uh, protect and defend his rights and investments uh, by uh, filing a suit directly uh, against the government. Of course, it would be an extraordinary case, uh, but we should uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, uh, it's not uh, a simple uh, situation. In particular, the agreements uh, uh, made uh, prior to 1992, when uh, the Russian Standard uh, Agreement uh, was uh, adopted, uh, because uh, these agreements uh, also feature reservations uh, allowing the investor uh, to appeal directly to the Court of Arbitration only uh, in the event uh, uh, the, the method of compensation uh, is concerned. Uh, uh, it's uh, the, the basic uh, provision of these agreements. Uh, uh, to uh, protect uh, an investor, the investor's capital. On the other hand, uh, uh, whether uh, some a step by the government was an expropriation or nationalization, it's still up to the government to decide. Uh, unfortunately, the past uh, uh, arbitrary practice uh, uh, has featured uh, no uh, one common approach. And of course, uh, it uh, uh, belittles uh, the right uh, of the investors to uh, protect uh, their rights uh, and to uh, make use of these uh, institutions and conventions. Also. Even uh, in case of a successful uh, decision by the Court of Arbitration, how to uh, enact it, how to uh, enforce it, well, uh, given uh, the sovereignty of, of the state, uh, uh, some issues may be encountered in practice. Uh, hard issue. Thank you. Applause for time. It's so difficult to put such a complex in these interesting topics in such a short amount of time. I'm sure each of our speakers will be happy to give you their business cards after the session and perhaps send you their slides if you're interested. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's pull up the next presentation, please. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'll be brief. I would like to dwell uh, on uh, 
uh, on uh, disputes uh, which emerge uh, uh, when investments are made in a country. Uh, any investment uh, may be effective solely in one case, uh, uh, when the investors' rights uh, will be uh, uh, protected by all the instruments uh, offered by each individual state. In our case, it's uh, the Russian Federation. Yeah, Russia. Uh, all of us are well aware uh, that uh, an investor has two levels of relationships. Uh, first, uh, those with the government, uh, when the government uh, sets uh, some guarantees, uh, warranties uh, on uh, investment protection, and the level number two, uh, which is uh, uh, lower, uh, which allow the investor to uh, resolve efficiently uh, conflicts uh, in the process of investment uh, making uh, with the uh, parties, uh, opponents, uh, third parties. Uh, he has to be in contact uh, uh, for investment. All of us understand well that uh, at the end of the day, all these conflicts uh, are to be settled in court. Traditionally, uh, uh, an issue uh, arises uh, uh, in which uh, instance, uh, uh, judicial uh, instance, uh, uh, to consider all these issues uh, where it would be more fair. But traditionally, I have to say, many or probably the majority of uh, foreign investors uh, are rather skeptical uh, to uh, the transfer of these disputes to Russian courts. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's all about uh, uh, state courts and uh, Russian uh, tribunals. Uh, I, I would not uh, defend uh, uh, Russian courts, uh, uh, both uh, of, of, the, of, of the two categories, uh, but I'd like to focus you more on uh, whether uh, this uh, choice or uh, this decision, uh, whether, whether, whether any of it would be efficient, whether it would uh, protect uh, the investors. Uh, I mean, uh, foreign investors are running for. But the main uh, reason uh, why the disputes are handed over to international courts uh, is uh, a clear uh, procedure there. Maybe more confidence uh, to the respective uh, institutions, uh, I mean courts, tribunals, uh, courts of arbitration, and uh, more confidence also that uh, a conflict which may arise uh, would be uh, settled more fairly. I would not uh, dare uh, uh, evaluate uh, Russian international courts as for their uh, justice doing, uh, and where it's more probable uh, to get a, a well-grounded uh, uh, indictment uh, or judgment. Well, I'd rather to dwell on efficiency. Well, generally, uh, all these issues are tackled uh, in agreements, uh, contracts, uh, and uh, we uh, can single out uh, several levels, uh, uh, several uh, types of reservations which are most frequent. Uh, first, uh, it's uh, handing disputes uh, over to Russian or international courts. It's uh, level one, uh, where decisions are made uh, and settlements. But uh, in most cases, uh, foreign investors uh, uh, give more confidence uh, to international courts, uh, and the second, either state courts uh, or uh, tribunals or courts of arbitration. Uh, there is no wide difference uh, there. As a rule, uh, they are uh, uh, tribunals uh, which uh, consider most of the disputes uh, uh, arising from investment uh, relations in the Russian Federation. Uh, at this particular level, we encounter uh, the following uh, obstacle. Well, on the one hand, the investor uh, reserves uh, for himself uh, a fairly conservative and uh, understandable uh, approach to potential dispute settlement. Uh, but this approach uh, uh, remains uh, uh, com convenient until a specific uh, dispute emerges. Uh, and this results uh, not that much for some uh, uh, defects uh, of uh, judicial uh, uh, defense, but rather some other point. Uh, that is, uh, uh, international courts uh, are not always uh, efficient uh, and are not always uh, allow to resolve promptly uh, an, an issue, a case, uh, and uh, to provide a defense in court which is required for a foreign investor. Uh, why? All the panel participants, uh, maybe uh, the majority of this audience, understand that uh, in most cases when you uh, go to court, uh, the party which has decided uh, to do it uh, is uh, interested in getting security. 
Uh, this security would allow uh, to, uh, to uh, during the entire period of court proceedings, uh, to to uh, ensure uh, 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 enforcement of uh, the indictment. It will guarantee that uh, certain assets uh, are frozen. Nothing would happen to these assets, uh, or uh, monies in uh, adequate amount would be arrested on the bank accounts of uh, the opponent. Uh, when we uh, discuss uh, international courts, uh, we. Uh, however long we can uh, speak about uh, their efficiency, uh, how fair they are. But unfortunately, we have to note uh, such a thing. Uh, international courts uh, are not in a position uh, to uh, provide protection at the first stage of dispute uh, uh, of court proceedings. When we go to court, uh, when we submit documents uh, to international court of arbitration, it's rather hard uh, to get uh, to uh, levy security, which would allow uh, to uh, uh, implement this indictment later. And uh, where do we come up uh, to? Well, finally, we get uh, uh, a judgment, uh, which may be fair, it probably satisfies uh, the investor, yet, uh, unfortunately, uh, is uh, uh, unfeasible in Russia, unrealistic. Uh, I don't mean legally, but rather actually, as a matter of fact. Uh, so by the point in time when uh, uh, international court's uh, 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 decision comes in effect, and when we uh, come with it uh, into the Russian Federation, we get the order uh, of uh, justice, but it's uh, late already uh, to uh, levy something. Uh, so at the first stage, we are going to court. Uh, international courts, unfortunately, they do not allow to, uh, to uh, use efficiently uh, the primary judicial protection mechanism, that is, uh, uh, getting the security. In this regard, uh, uh, we should be guided by a very simple and uh, universal rule, uh, uh, which is common probably globally. Uh, I mean, arbitration court reservations appropriate to indicate those uh, the venue of uh, a dispute or settlement, uh, the country or the court of arbitration, which is located either at place or at a uh, 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 defendant's uh, uh, <coughs> residence, either a Russian court, and it's a Russian federation, or it may be international court, uh, no problem. And only uh, in this particular context, uh, when uh, the place of dispute is uh, linked uh, to the place of residence of the defendant or uh, his assets, uh, then uh, whether, whether the, this dispute would be settled uh, uh, appropriately. I don't discuss uh, what the subject to uh, uh, decision making or anything. I mean uh, the effectiveness of dispute settlement. That's what I mean. Uh, the party which will be involved in the conflict uh, would be able uh, to, uh, to to be able to take all the measures as provided in the, the uh, court proceedings documents uh, uh, to uh, uh, protect uh, its uh, interests at the first phase of dispute settlement uh, and uh, as a consequence uh, the uh, uh, feasibility, the, uh, how realistic they may be these decisions in practice. Uh, I'd like uh, to stop at this point. Thank you. Good afternoon once again. I think it's a bit strange to me to speak in English when I'm in Moscow, so I would switch in Russian, if you don't mind, Chris. Вот у нас была такая интересная тема говорить о... We have had a very interesting subject on the agenda to, well, well, uh, to, 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 to discuss law, uh, legal issues uh, here, and how uh, courts uh, interpret uh, uh, certain cases. But I will say that uh, it's not everything so simple in the Czech Republic in this area. And we uh, uh, sought, uh, uh, the government sought uh, to, uh, uh, to overturn the entire civil law quite soon, uh, starting next year. Uh, new legislation will come in effect, and I would say one of the uh, basic principles uh, well, uh, the authors uh, say there should be predictability in uh, law construction. Uh, one of the uh, input provisions uh, uh, indicate to that. Uh, and the principles of uh, freedom, uh, will of the parties, uh, 
to agree on their intents uh, uh, freely, what our colleague uh, said earlier, how in some cases in Russia you can see that uh, uh, laws are interpreted uh, in the sense uh, uh, not that uh, a law uh, would uh, allow, uh, the, in certain sense they are prohibitive uh, uh, in uh, interpreting certain provisions. Uh, it is one of the basic principles. Uh, well, uh, as I understand, it was voiced. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the new law is based uh, on some symbols, uh, in a sense, uh, because it's number is 89, uh, 2012, uh, which uh, points uh, to uh, the year of reforms in our country. Other numbers may be found there. And you can define variously. For instance, uh, six three times, 666, uh, is uh, a religious wedlock. Uh, it's a marital ceremony uh, in a church. Uh, the fact, well, there certainly be changes in the legislation. Uh, three uh, main bills uh, will be passed and will come in effect. That is the civil code, the law. Uh, the bill uh, on uh, uh, trade corporations and uh, on international private law, uh, 4,000 articles in total. Well, we have a lot to learn uh, in our life, uh, but an advantage of our team is uh, that uh, 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 we have three authors uh, from ourselves, uh, and we uh, try to scrutinize it uh, as far as possible uh, and to construe it uh, as assisted by them. These are some terms. Uh, I mean, uh, amends. Uh, there will be amends uh, not only in the three uh, laws, uh, but uh, in some others, uh, for example, uh, the one on cadaster on uh, company record registration, when, for instance, uh, notaries uh, help uh, make changes promptly, and uh, there won't be need to wait uh, for a court decision uh, for new uh, company registration, and so on. Well, we also have some data. I would say the most uh, interesting amends, uh, which are in store for us, uh, uh, in the new uh, wording of the laws, as I said, uh, high emphasis will be made there uh, on the willingness of the parties uh, in a transaction, even if uh, uh, they uh, uh, not uh, uh, quickly decide uh, on something. Uh, the current legislation states uh, that it could be a null and void action or a transaction, if they cannot identify their rights and uh, commitments uh, based on the new, based on the new principle, there will be a, a possibility only to argue. Uh, well, if uh, if each individual party was guided uh, by uh, some other approaches or uh, understanding of their standpoints, but uh, in the reverse case, in the opposite case, uh, it will be possible to confirm for them to confirm uh, what the, or the think, th thoughts they had had, and then the transaction will remain valid. The new law also will indicate uh, the, uh, 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 the single or common uh, method of asset management, uh, property management, uh, I'll discuss it a bit later, which will allow to, I would say, uh, to introduce an absolutely new concept uh, in the Czech uh, the, the, the right, uh, right uh, uh, both similar to France and Germany, because uh, Uh, there will be a concept of trust, uh, operating trust, uh, and it's based uh, on the principles uh, which uh, uh, Quebec's uh, civil code, uh, well, 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 uh, makes uh, some transition uh, from uh, continental law to another law. What is uh, today is not always clear how 
which way is um, response is uh, possibility of uh, management companies uh, will be uh, more will be closer as uh, to the uh, notions of of English law and uh, uh, business judgment um, and and similar principles will be prevailing although formally uh, they will increase uh, responsibility of members of the board and uh, in case they are uh, acting based on uh, um, uh, sufficient information and the court will not have the ability to to review to their um, their results in, and in terms of economic result. So I will move fast. Uh, what is also interesting for foreign investors uh, may relate to new principles of um, main trading companies. It's like joint stock companies and limited liability companies will be possible to more flexible uh, form management and and allocation of rights related to shares, um, shareholdings in the company, when it will be possible to allocate uh, shareholders uh, the rights uh, are disproportional uh, to those who will have more more votes and other may have. Uh, more rights uh, to to incomes in case of uh, 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 profit distribution uh, the company will be possible to uh, form uh, management in two ways like existing structure supervisory boards and, and management or uh, unilateral uh, single uh, governance by the board of directors and, and director who will control uh, the management board. In a limited liability company, it would be interesting to have the opportunity to have not only a registration of its of shareholding, but also have uh, securities related to this uh, shareholding in a limited liability company. Since now existing uh, in Czech relations, uh, civil. They are somehow different from relations between commercial entities and new legislation uh, simplifies it. There will be a, a unified regulation that will be uh, more clear uh, to foreign investors. Like when it was a case of leasing, you had to determine whether it is a lease between entrepreneur or not because the uh, Validity time of, uh, of commercial lease and in terms of civil only three. So I would say this not very comfortable uh, uh, differences would not exist. However, some new principles are introduced, which so far have been more uh, like protection. Uh, protection, consumer protection, because uh, according to civil codes principles, it will be a protection of a weaker party, although it acts as as a company or not. So it will be not only in contract relations, but in relations uh, between companies. So some more technical. Uh, things that will enable more flexibility and, and, and security of rights 
assurances of rights in, in contracts, mostly when financing will be introduced, not only a bank, bank guarantee, but corporate guarantee will be described, which so far is not been existent. Also, possibly would be to have the position of um, when they have the pledge in the first position, they can make cessation to other, and this will, could help when refinancing debt. Uh, also, they will define the positions of agents uh, for security, which is also related to financing in case of uh, syndicated loans. So, it's quite large uh, changes would be related to real estate when until now it was possible to, to consider separately uh, real estate as a land and, and separately buildings uh, built on, on this land. So we coming back to the previous principle that mostly land and everything built on it um, by one property. And if uh, it is separate ownership, the right of development will also be real estate, but not building, but the right that will be possible to create for a certain period of time, uh, maximum uh, 90 years. So I already told you about trust. It could help when creating uh, specific structures um, of and entering uh, new investors when it would be possible to transfer some know-how to trust, which can then move by a, a great principle into uh, third-party hands or be brought back and how they agree, or possibly it could help when structuring uh, private sources uh, would help to when to determine uh, uh, inheritance when there are private companies or business and um, inherit inheritance would be more regulated so the last slide tells about the the right of inheritance like uh, until now in Czech Republic I would say that although the the will uh, formally exists but uh, in the end, the, the final decision is in the agreement of those left. So new principles will allow to provide conditions and determine uh, accurately to whom which part of inheritance uh, goes, which would be possible with trusts uh, to be structured. So it was interesting to speak briefly, and uh, if you have any questions, I would answer. Thank you. Uh, Save some questions for the end, hopefully. Good afternoon, my name is Julia, and I would like to tell few words about structuring deals, how we see it on our experience and practice. Excellent. So if we move away from formalism and go to non-legal but business language for any investor, any transaction and any jurisdiction, it is important how it is executed. And this key is structure of the deal. And with appropriate determination of components could be a, a good thing uh, as a result if it is done 
on the quality and say uh, intelligently, then that's one of the points of to ensure success of any any transaction. So, and for any investor, it would be important to determine with tax aspects and, and legal limitations in any jurisdiction with any investment uh, legal opportunities of jurisdiction and, and the key aspect, the settlements between parties. So these four uh, components, they influence a result and, and how the deal will be structured. So accordingly, if we uh, go into more details, uh, tax aspects uh, finally will be about selection of jurisdiction for deal execution. And the um, known problem is to search alternative for Cyprus, especially for Russian investors who invest in Europe, for example. And if we move forward, we can make a um, conclusion that now there is no alternative to Cyprus yet, but in the way we know it. But with certain uh, positive approach, we can reach preferences and, I mean, advantages when we use other jurisdictions, and we'll possibly discuss it in more detail. Talking about legal limitations, then we need to take into account anti-monopoly legislation. Um, in respect of about strategic um, companies that also have some football banking activity, if we talk about investment in some financial institutions, and here we say that we need to think in advance how agreement will be reached, and which documents need to be processed, and how much time it will take, and include it in the structure of the deal. Important aspect is those aspects that we want to describe in the documents. And, 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 and here is a number of significant moments, like not, not always comfortable when, when executing deals in Russian Federation based on Russian law. And uh, finally, all these answers to these points will bring investors to selection of law applicable in the deal, and as we see in the practice, most deals are subject to foreign law, like English, because Russian law is not always uh, protecting investors sufficiently. Mostly, these conditions and in the opportunity to make deals with conditions and uh, making documents of wraps and warranties and uh, further. Uh, protection of investor rights, violating efficiency of shareholder agreements, and other specific uh, provisions that are not possible to describe within Russian law. And key thing is settlements between parties and clear, if not finalized, the deal will not be closed. Again, we need to take into account such as precise possibility to use instruments that directly are not um, included in the Russian law, this escrow, escrow agent settlements and, and trust um, instruments when a third party is a few uh, uh, parties and not possible to settle in one day, for example, and some other aspects that in practice are encountered but not regulated in Russian legislation. So this is about the issue about tax consequences of uh, deal uh, execution, and we can see that compared to Cyprus, there are very few uh, um, uh, uh, advantages uh, similar in nature. So um, nuances of this jurisdiction are preferable to investors. So about question about legal limitation, uh, I have already. Uh, um, Discuss and about selection of governing law. Yeah, it is important which conditions should be included in an SPE and, and other documents on the deal. When um, making these conditions, we can decide about governing law, understanding that some issues cannot be included in the document, which will be based on the jurisdiction where we'll execute this deal. So, all this. Components uh, sooner or later will 
bring us to answering where and how the deal will be executed. I'd like to mention that, that English law is not always panacea for um, deal execution is clear because we need to take into account as the price of the deal and amount of the deal and, and costs uh, parties are ready to incur to close the deal. So before the doc documents are signed and in case of dis dispute. So these are important things that needs to be taken into account when structuring any deal. Thank you. For next presentation, please. Yeah. I thought I was going to be the last one, but <laughs> I beat you, Andre. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, I, I structured my presentation in a way to try to focus um, uh, in, a, in a very general sense uh, on, on all the um, items that were provided in the preliminary agenda for, for this uh, panel. So this is going to be a very general overview and um, in the interest of time I will also have to probably skip and fast forward over some of the items, but to the extent you have any questions I'd be of course pleased to uh, answer them later. Um, uh, as far as Serbian legal framework is concerned, uh, we have been in, in, in the last uh, three or four years in a very intensive uh, um, harmonization process with uh, the EU um, uh, law and uh, virtually every, um, um, every uh, this is the slide. Uh, virtually every, every area of our law has been uh, influenced by this effort. Um, uh, for example, in 2010, uh, a total of uh, over 800 legislation were uh, adopted. Um, the following year, this trend continued, although not that many legislation were introduced. Um, Areas such as company law, capital markets, uh, uh, etc., were all uh, um, uh, changed. Uh, that that's a very very significant uh, effort, which is, as I said, still continuing. We are in the process of drafting um, a new civil code uh, as well. Um, but the 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 main challenge was to start. Uh, implementing those legislation and basically introducing uh, implementing regulations. In some cases, uh, uh, we were waiting for uh, more than a year or almost two years uh, for implementing legislation to be adopted. This is a major problem and it uh, um, uh, creates, uh, creates obstacles for, for practice to be created and obviously uh, opens um, uh, a lot of uncertainty uh, for uh, everyone, including foreign investors. Um, role of uh, both public and private bodies is very important in the in the in the process of introducing uh, legislation. Uh, we have witnessed in Serbia that uh, uh, bodies such as uh, foreign investors uh, associations, councils, and uh, various chambers of commerce, like American Chamber of Commerce, are actively um, pursuing different um, 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 legal agendas, uh, which need to be uh, improved. And this has uh, created some uh, uh, very important results in practice. At the same time, um, uh, legal practitioners are also very important uh, uh, part of this process because especially the uh, lawyers who are uh, uh, members of um, international law firms because they uh, bring the know-how and uh, knowledge that is needed in order to implement this uh, uh, new legal framework. I, I will very briefly go over the uh, transactions structuring and post structuring structuring considerations because they're m mainly in line with what we have throughout the region. Um, I will maybe just emphasize some of the peculiarities um, uh, relevant for for our system. Um, it's important to conduct a very um, uh, thorough legal due diligence as well as financial and uh, maybe some other specialized areas such as environment, IT, etc. Uh, because all of this will um, eventually influence the type of 
transaction that we will have. Um, um, of course, many of these considerations will depend on, on the area and industry in which uh, 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 the companies are uh, operating. Um, another important thing is, of course, the uh, uh, approvals uh, uh, in um, regulated fields such as uh, uh, banking and insurance. Uh, any kind of transaction will require uh, that involves major uh, acquisition of a major stake will inquire, uh, require uh, approvals of the National Bank of Serbia, for example. And also, uh, it's quite often these days that uh, transaction will require um, approvals of the competition authority. Um, that happens not only in transactions that are happening in Serbia, but also foreign to foreign transactions because of the relevant thresholds. So this needs to be taken into account early on and uh, uh, for, for the planning purposes. Financial considerations are many. Maybe I will just mention two. Um, uh, financial assistance rules in Serbia are such that they prohibit, uh, in very general terms, uh, 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 giving of any uh, stimulation such as uh, uh, loans or, or collateral for the purpose of the acquisitions of stakes or, or shares in, in Serbian companies, which means that uh, the uh, transaction needs to be structured very carefully. Uh, uh, to avoid any uh, problems in this respect. Tax considerations, uh, um, as, you, as you would expect, uh, 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 most of um, the acquisitions are uh, uh, taking place through vehicles uh, that are um, registered in uh, Cyprus or the Netherlands, as well as other uh, um, um, tax havens. Um, uh, there is an increased scrutiny of our authorities uh, as of very late uh, recently um, uh, towards some of the um, tax havens and uh, there has been also an increase of uh, certain duties uh, such as uh, royalties uh, and, and uh, income from um, uh, interest. It's taxed now pursuant to uh, slightly higher rates. As far as the Post-transaction considerations are concerned, of course, it will depend on, on the type of transaction. Um, uh, asset deals will likely require um, certain uh, right, uh, further licenses uh, uh, to be obtained following the transaction. And um, um, uh, as far as labor issues are concerned, uh, in case of companies that have uh, um, uh, employee unions, uh, uh, no uh, changes of, of internal enactments will be possible uh, for a period of one year following the transaction, so that needs to be taken into account. Um, okay. uh, as far as the protection of international investors and minority shareholders is concerned, first going to the uh, international investors, the main uh, uh, law governing this area is the foreign investments law, and it contains very common um, um, features uh, that are found in other uh, systems. Freedom investment is one of the uh, principles, generally uh, very broad, some exceptions uh, such as in, rec in, in the field of arms trade and, and uh, production. Uh, foreigners cannot uh, have majority stakes. National treatment, uh, then freezing clauses which uh, pro uh, prohibit the uh, changes in the uh, legal uh, framework that will adversely impact the uh, foreign investor. Uh, there is a general uh, right to freely convert uh, foreign currency. We should bear in mind, however, that in Serbia we have some, um, um, uh, like in, in Ukraine, uh, uh, issues with the relatively conservative foreign exchange rules. Um, uh, basically, as in Ukraine, for, it's much easier for money to come into Serbia than uh, to leave the country. Um, to illustrate this point, for example, when you are, uh, as a foreigner, se uh, selling a, 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 a stake in a limited liability company in Serbia, um, the buyer, uh, if it's a Serbian company, cannot uh, uh, transfer funds directly to the foreign uh, uh, company or the seller. Um, it has to be transferred to a non-resident uh, dinner account, dinner is a um, Serbian currency, which will then be transformed into or converted into um, whichever foreign currency uh, the, the, the seller wants. And then only after that it can be uh, transferred outside of Serbia. Um, 
that's extremely inflexible and, and I would also say not very clever, but uh, historically had some um, relevance uh, because uh, previously uh, tax was due on, on those transfers and the idea was not to allow for uh, any leakage of money before the relevant taxes were paid. Nowadays, there are no such taxes, so it's a pure obstacle which has nothing to do with, with uh, logic. Um, there is also preferential treatment of investors. Of course, if there is a bilateral or multilateral investment treaty, uh, the uh, investor coming from the relevant country will have, in addition to the national treatment, this uh, enhanced uh, preferential treatment. Uh, I outlined on the next two slides the, uh, some of the main uh, minority shareholders' rights. I think they're relatively self-explanatory. Uh, for example, uh, when it comes to derivative action, it can be brought in case of uh, allegations of breach of uh, uh, duty of due care or uh, breaches of the obligation to uh, uh, keep business secrets. And, and uh, it's required, uh, the required minority is 5%. Um, then, um, going forward, uh, there are some other uh, uh, my, uh, rules, uh, right of uh, exit to, of the non-consenting shareholders. Uh, in case uh, a shareholder is left in the minority and is against uh, certain status changes or, or changes of uh, form, it can eventually ask that uh, his stake is purchased by, by the company. Um, also, the, um, the right of exit uh, in when, when the majority shareholder acquires 90% stake, uh, minority shareholders then can uh, ask for their stake, uh, shares to be purchased. It was uh, uh, previously the, the quota was 95%, uh, so now it's, it has been um, uh, uh, in haste to, to 10% basically minority. Um, I would skip to the next one. Um, as far as the investment promotion is concerned, uh, we generally try to promote uh, uh, our uh, region as a favorable in, uh, region for, for investments. And uh, there are uh, specialized bodies on, on um, all three levels, the, the highest republic level, and then on provincial levels, and on the level of municipalities. There are various um, um, credits, uh, tax uh, holidays, um, for example, um, uh, tax holidays for the corporate income tax uh, for up to 10 years uh, um, or um, um, uh, grants of uh, between four and 10,000 euros per um, employee um, pursuant to certain uh, terms. Uh, we're also uh, relatively attractive because uh, uh, of some um, uh, uh, trade uh, agreements uh, starting with EU but then also with Russia and, and uh, Turkey. Um, um, there was generally a, there is generally an increase of investments from from Russia in the past five years. In the first half of the previous decade, it was mainly um, uh, Austrian, uh, German, um, Italian investors who were coming to um, the country and the rest of the uh, former Yugoslavia. But uh, um, the major breakthrough was made when um, Russian Gazprom um, acquired the majority stake in the. Uh, main petroleum company in Serbia and uh, is now basically using this entity as uh, 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 the launching pad for further expansion in the Balkans, such as in Romania and uh, Bulgaria. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, uh, financial sector uh, companies, banks basically like Bank of Moscow and Sparebank through the acquisition of the Volksbank who are now operating in Serbia. and. Uh, um, last, well, that's the conclusions. I skipped too much. Okay. Um, there was a, an item about the independence and integrity of courts. This is, of course, a very important uh, subject for um, all legal practitioners, uh, irrespective of whether we're corporate lawyers or not. Um, generally, uh, there have been uh, some major developments in this field in Serbia. Um, the, the, the structure of the courts has been changed recently, and uh, there were reappointments of judges. Some of these changes were for the better, but uh, also there were some uh, complaints by, for example, EU that uh, uh, 
temporary appointments were not done on, on only on merits basis, uh, so things will need to be improved there. Um, the experience and quality of judges is so, in some cases questionable. There was a major outflow of uh, um, experts from this field into the practicing field in the past decades. Now uh, things are getting improved, but there, there are more things that need to be done in order to increase the quality. And finally, um, transparency of jurisprudence currently an issue because um, we are a continental legal system. That means that precedents are not officially the source of law, but are important for us. Uh, the problem is that uh, there is no systematized way of publishing uh, court uh, 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 rulings, and, and um, as far as I understand, uh, uh, an effort is now uh, made to uh, make this fully public, which will help all of us uh, to better uh, monitor the, the court practice. Uh, this is it. Uh, I will pass on to Andre so that... Last but not least. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a round of applause. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, since uh, I'm the last uh, speaker, I'd like first to thank uh, my colleagues. Uh, I've learned many things today. Uh, thank you uh, for your overview presentations, uh, brilliant ones, uh, which you provide. Uh, uh, a good picture uh, on investment uh, in various jurisdictions. Uh, my subject is more technical. I'll try not to uh, let you fall asleep, uh, but it's uh, nonetheless important. Uh, uh, it uh, 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 links uh, to the issues uh, which were touched upon uh, by the previous speakers. Uh, I mean, uh, guarantees or warranties. Uh, and uh, uh, compensation guarantees uh, or commitments. Uh, well, since we are limited in timing, uh, we'll uh, discuss the warranties and guarantees. Uh, it's no secret that the majority of the transactions with regard to Russian assets, uh, well, the reasons have been voiced earlier, uh, are being structured uh, under common law. And in that sense, uh, Russian law, of course, uh, is behind because we don't have uh, the relevant tool uh, or an instrument, uh, also for the purpose uh, of uh, improving competitiveness of Russian legislation. Uh, a, a draft uh, bill uh, was uh, submitted to the State Duma to change the civil code, which among uh, various amends uh, uh, provides also for uh, taking on uh, uh, warranties or assurances by the parties. Uh, since these uh, amends uh, are based uh, uh, largely uh, on uh, common law, and uh, since many investors uh, are used to, to using common law in Russia, uh, in my presentation I will compare the, the suggested uh, amends uh, with the, the English legal framework, which is, uh, w works fairly well. Now, some words about uh, why uh, we need these uh, warranties uh, and uh, guarantees. Well, the main goal is uh, investor protection. A few investors uh, are willing to enter in a transaction without assurances and guarantees. And the second goal, which probably is not so obvious, but still it's there, is like urging the seller to uh, disclosing certain circumstances of a transaction, because uh, uh, by common law, uh, disclose the circumstances, uh, not including insurances, warranties, and guarantees. Uh, basically, based on past practice, uh, uh, debating this issue in a transaction uh, accounts for probably 50% of all the time spent uh, on uh, closing a transaction. And these provisions probably account for 50% of the entire document. But uh, to, uh, draw, to, to summarize, what are these guarantees? What do they refer to? Uh, these guarantees in relation to the title, uh, a title for uh, shares that uh, they, uh, to, to confirm that they are owned by the proper owner, they were properly issued, uh, guarantees with regard to the company itself, its financial status, uh, 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 no bankruptcy uh, signs, and uh, the guarantees with relation to uh, this company assets uh, that they are owned specifically by this uh, company, they are in appropriate state of repair, and so on. As for uh, what to compare with, uh, they are the two main provisions uh, or definitions, uh, uh, the guarantees under common law, 
uh, are some promise uh, with regard to some uh, circumstances and facts. Uh, warranty is about the same, but uh, uh, well, it's, uh, the, the other party should rely on. Uh, and of course, can, what will the legal consequences? Uh, uh, negative consequences arise for the country, uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, warranty breaker. This is uh, the uh, loss indemnity. In case uh, of uh, uh, breaking an assurance uh, warranty, then uh, this uh, uh, agreement uh, is uh, uh, termination, early termination, and additionally also uh, loss uh, indemnity. What uh, do we witness presently in Russia? Formally, nothing. Uh, the civil code, uh, these warranties and guarantees are missing in the civil code, but in practice, uh, uh, Russian uh, market players uh, include oftentimes uh, in the documents regulated by Russian law uh, long, very long, long uh, lists uh, of uh, assurance and warranties uh, similar to the common law in case uh, of uh, law breaking, and thus these cases are on record. Uh, the judicial practice, uh, I would not say it's well established, uh, but uh, it is uh, available. Uh, what uh, uh, the uh, sufferer can do? And the first uh, uh, way is probably to recognize uh, 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 an agreement in null and void, either to terminate it or probably lower the price. I would put it right away. Well, to summarize, uh, uh, except uh, except uh, certain cases, uh, this practice uh, mostly is not to the benefit of the investor. Uh, for example, we can bring up uh, one thing: the Russian court. Uh, it's an example. Uh, a warranty was breached uh, that uh, a company uh, has no commitments, has kept those disclosed, but as a matter of fact, uh, the company has uh, certain promissory notes not reflected in reporting, and as a result, it uh, uh, will be a profit maker, a, a, a loss maker. And the Russian court, uh, following the civil co current civil code, uh, states uh, that it's okay with the subject of transaction, and uh, when the uh, LLC uh, acquires, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a proper uh, player of, of the transaction, and uh, uh, whether a company is a profit maker and uh, non reporting it uh, uh, or its commitments, uh, well, it will be la rather uh, a component uh, uh, of uh, the uh, uh, motivations to enter in a transaction. But uh, a motivation uh, does not provide grounds, uh, essential grounds, uh, to recognize uh, uh, a transaction null void. Uh, so it's uh, an extensive uh, uh, body of uh, uh, the uh, of, of this article, the article which is uh, uh, being suggested to include in the civil code. If we try to structure it, uh, the point is uh, uh, that the Russian lawmakers uh, borrow in large part uh, the British uh, uh, structure of uh, warranties uh, and uh, guarantees and creating, while creating a symbiosis of those, uh, which boil down to the fact that uh, you need to prove uh, uh, that uh, the purchaser had relied uh, on uh, the assurances and warranties, and, uh, and it's important uh, to prove uh, the evidence to uh, this uh, breach, uh, and uh, to also to prove, which will, uh, has not been a prototype, that uh, the seller uh, uh, had known about this provision. And also, uh, the remedies, uh, the re legal remedies, uh, similar to what uh, yeah, they have in the UK, that is uh, uh, <coughs> indemnity, it also uh, agreement to early to agreement termination to recognize it null and void. Uh, seem, it seems to be uh, fine, uh, but uh, there are some questions, uh, at least at this uh, phase, uh, uh, when uh, uh, no legal practice has been established and when uh, uh, the very uh, wording uh, of the article uh, does not give a clear answer to some questions uh, whether uh, they suggested the structure uh, is uh, investor protection at the uh, pre-transaction uh, stage, uh, whether without having entered into an agreement, uh, the seller will be held responsible uh, for some uh, uh, untrue, uh, untruthful uh, assurances, and whether it will resolve uh, the main uh, issue, whether guarantees will be given uh, to the very asset uh, and the company, uh, whether it will be, all those will be recognized by courts. Uh, but uh, the goal of the lawmakers was probably specifically this one. But uh, uh, it, in, it does not ensue from the suggested uh, provisions uh, directly. Clearly, uh, the remedies uh, uh, for investor will be loss indemnity, agreement termination, 
recognize null and void, but since uh, for the law, uh, lawmakers uh, bring up the criterion of uh, that they might be essential, these uh, assurance. No one knows which of them will be recognized as essential. Uh, when you invest, you will not be aware which of these legal remedies uh, you will uh, secure for yourself. Uh, thank you. We were supposed to do a panel discussion now, but we're, we're past time. So let me just open up uh, the floor for questions in case anyone has any questions for this panel. Please, first in the back and then the front, please. Two questions, possible. First, about options in Russian courts, whether there are cases of uh, executing decisions, if it's about option by English law and translated down to Russia. Second question about Cyprus. A number of have uh, up to from 1,000 to 10,000 dollars. It's very urgent. Which legal sequence you offer if you studied this question? Yeah. The first question <coughs> I didn't quite get. I hope someone else around the table did and was going to raise their hand, unless you did. It's about Russian courts. That, that should be clear about Russian courts and and uh, enforcement of option uh, agreements uh, by Russian courts, right? It was related in, in some some presentation was touched upon, and then let me start discussion. Then, as far as I know, the, the, the legal practice on options that would straightforwardly say that options uh, operating is not established yet. Uh, still, the uh, issue is open about provisional uh, transactions, although wording changed in uh, shareholder uh, agreements about uh, divestment uh, of shareholders with in certain conditions. So so the legislator would tell you some other wording whether uh, the courts would be considering as uh, some non-validity of conditions uh, depending on the will of one of the parties, but, but relating to one of the circumstances uh, and including it in the contract, so the draft, the, the the problem still exists and is supported by the draft that need to exclude this uh, option agreement. And we hope that this is issue will be resolved. But in spite of uh, option agreement introduction, and a week ago there were comments of the government on on article 157 on on provisional and conditional contracts where the government in their comments uh, said that this article this clause needs to be changed in order to to reflect the the requirements um, in russian federation and the business requirements in order to resolve one way or another these conditions depending on the will on, on one party. Mm. Question. Did anyone else hear it? <laughs> okay, sorry. The translation uh, screwed up in the middle. If you could restate your question, please. Uh, a, sec a set of actions uh, which uh, a company should uh, uh, which, which should be implemented or which should be done for retiring money from Cyprus? Because this question is, is very hot in Russia right now for some companies. Yeah, that is a good question. The, the, if you've already got money in Cyprus, getting money out of Cyprus is very difficult. I know a guy who actually bought 10,000 SIM cards and is now going to be giving away from Christmas gifts for the next 20 years. Um, I don't know, maybe you've heard something in that house. So I wish I had a better answer for you, but that's, that's, we'd be paid a lot more money if we had a better question to answer to that one. Um, other questions from the audience? About Cyprus, it's clear that there is no unified solution yet. But some 
uh, some persons, what are they are trying to do. Uh, we are talking about like uh, uh, bank and what they try to do uh, via Russian courts to arrest property of like a bank in Russia. As far as I know, they have subsidiary banks. And again, we need to look at it, but there is one or two precedents when Russian courts arrested this property. So next step. I'm talking about late. So when, uh, if it comes to uh, property, um, uh, like a bank uh, allocation, this creditors would be first in line. That's one of the options of steps that, that can be made, but somehow implemented. Two is I know um, depending on what country you invested in, into Cyprus, there may be a bilateral investment treaty, um, because you know so that I know different um, law firms are looking at different angles uh, to how to go under the treaty to enforce and, 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 and protect those assets. That's an, but it's still early days on, on on some of those disputes. We previously had a question in the front. Thank you. Uh, my question is also related to options. It is clear that in common law, when structuring deals, uh, they use put and call options. In Russian law, it doesn't work. And when it works, but do you see any any similar or analogs of this mechanism that can can work and protect investor rights when some some conditions of of the agreement are not performed? Okay, let me start. Uh, we're talking about analogs in in Russian legislation, right? Because options uh, are structured in, in case when uh, there is a foreign element in the deal, and then the option um, contracts are subject to governed by, by foreign law, they are operating. But the, there is no established practice again. But one of the uh, versions that partially can protect uh, the parties, and I can say that. It was not fully tested because companies started to use it. That's um, with non-withdrawal of offer. When signing the main agreements, um, in any case, um, the and to get acceptance on needed conditions. So, and this is difficult to structure, but this mechanism can be used. Potentially, although we cannot say that it was worked out and it provides the level of protection, because many proposals of these instruments to foreign investors encounter their misunderstanding and um, cautiousness, because it's not clear how it will work in practice. Uh, in, in Serbia, like in Russia, we, we don't have these things regulated in our uh, laws, but they're frequently applied in practice. And to the best of my knowledge, there hasn't been a major case so far which has tested you know, what, what has been already agreed in uh, various contracts. But in some cases, the way uh, parties were trying to make sure that the option rights will work in case they have to be exercised was that um, the relevant agreements were uh, uh, signed and notarized in advance and deposited with the appropriate um, intermediary bank or uh, lawyers. And, and they're in that uh, way waiting for potential options to be exercised and they will be basically physically used then by, by the relevant party. But I, I can envisage potential uh, uh, challenges even in, in that case, but we haven't seen uh, seen it in practice yet. I think that's it. Thank you, everyone.